Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy and what to do when you run out of figs. Huh? Let's go! Hey, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. Today we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. Speaking of joy, you actually look a little the opposite. My favorite team lost a big game. Do you need to be sad for a little bit or do you want something to cheer you up? Definitely cheered up. In that case, I have just the thing. Of course, bubble wrap. It's fun, it's poppy, it's satisfying. You know, there are actually a whole bunch of things that are worth celebrating. Like hearing your favorite song. Sleeping in a bed that's just been made. Seeing a sunset. Hearing a cat purr. Ooh, free food samples at the grocery store. Food, of course. What else? Oh, I've got a good one, but it's gonna take a little bit to set up. Let's make it. One of my favorite things is building Rube Goldberg machines. A Rube Goldberg machine is a series of silly, complicated chain reactions where one event leads to the next, accomplishing some task like this. The idea was invented by cartoonist Rube Goldberg, who was born in 1883. And we have everything we need to build a Rube Goldberg machine right here. Lead the way. So first, we're gonna take our track. So we're gonna put this on here. Then we're gonna do this one. Perfect. Now we're gonna set it up right here. Then what? Uh, oh, blocks, that's what we need. Uh, 
Okay, Sebastian, take us through your creation. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Balloon Blaster 3000. We'll begin with sending our car down the ramp, hitting the blocks. These blocks? Of course. Which then hits our domino chain, which then our last domino will hit the tennis ball, go down the ramp, made of chopsticks, and then hit our ruler with the tack at the end, popping the balloon. Pretty impressive. Ready to try it? I thought you never ask. One, two, three, go! Yes! <laughs> no way! That actually worked! What do you say we take it up a notch? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> here, monkey, here, monkey, here, monkey, here, monkey. No, monkey, no! <sighs> Who knew it was so hard to find a trained monkey? The hot water heater was a nice touch. Ready? Ready. Well, rats. That did not go to plan. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in Habakkuk. Yes, you heard that right, Habakkuk. It's a small book near the very end of the Old Testament. Habakkuk was one of Israel's prophets, people who listened to God and wrote down God's words for others. The prophets lived and worked throughout the history of God's people. In fact, the Old Testament contains 17 books recorded by prophets. Many of them wrote during the final years of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, when foreign nations threatened to attack. Habakkuk recorded his message during this time as well. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. And I'm excited that I get to say Habakkuk a lot today. <laughs> Habakkuk. Okay, so Habakkuk, has a fun name, but he lived in Jerusalem during a very difficult time. The Northern Kingdom of Israel had already been conquered. The Southern Kingdom of Judah was still free, but enemies were closing in on all sides. Everywhere Habakkuk looked, he saw things going wrong and falling apart. Even in his own country, people had forgotten God. They were fighting with each other and treating others unfairly. Habakkuk called on God. Lord, I know how famous you are. I have great respect for you because of your mighty acts. Do them again for us. Make them known in our time. Habakkuk cried out to God to come and fix all these terrible things. And God answered, telling Habakkuk to write it all down. In the end, God promises to bring justice. In the perfect time, everything will be made right again. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the whole earth be silent in front of him. At this point, Habakkuk had a choice. He could look at what was happening around him and panic and lose hope. Or Habakkuk could look at the way God had worked in the lives of the Israelites over and over. He could trust God's promise to bring good out of hard things and right all wrongs. Habakkuk recorded his conversation with God, and at the end, he came to this conclusion. The fig trees might not bud. The vines might not produce any grapes. The olive crop might fail. The fields might not produce any food. There might not be any sheep in the pens. There might not be any cattle in the barns, but I, will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my Savior, fills me with joy. When terrible things happen, joy does not top our list of feelings. But in the middle of chaos and hardship, Habakkuk chose joy. Let's take a closer look. The fig trees might not bud. The vines might not produce any grapes. The olive crop might fail. The fields might not produce any food. There might not be any sheep in the pens. There might not be any cattle in the barns. Let's be real. If the fig trees don't do so well this year, you probably won't be affected. 
I mean, unless you really like fig bars. But in Habakkuk's time, the Israelites mostly made a living by farming. They either ate what they grew or what someone nearby grew. So if the crops failed, it was devastating. It meant that no one had enough to eat. The people could starve. Now, it's not a big deal for us now if olives don't have a bumper crop, but there are lots of things in our lives that can go wrong in a big way too. Maybe one of your parents loses their job. Maybe you find out someone in your family is really sick. Maybe your best friend starts hanging out with someone else instead. Maybe you won't be able to play soccer unless you get your math grade up, which feels impossible. Odds are, you can't control the bad thing that's happened, but you can control how you respond. If you focus only on what's wrong, you'll feel hopeless and overwhelmed. But you can choose to take your focus off of your problems, real though they are, and look to God. You can remember how God has helped you in the past and how God promises to make everything right in the future. This is how Habakkuk was able to say, but I will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my savior, fills me with joy. Through Jesus, you will be able to live forever with God. That doesn't make your current troubles any less difficult, but it does mean that you can find peace and joy in the midst of them and discover that there's always a reason to celebrate. The end. Wow, that is not easy stuff. Yeah, it just got real in here. Habakkuk didn't hold back. I mean, he was angry and upset, but he still made a choice to trust God's character. So, what's, what's our, our part in the story? Well, our job is super simple, but not super easy. When things are difficult, we can choose to find reasons to celebrate. The best place to start is with God. You can look at stuff God has done in the past, like promising to bless the whole world through Abraham's family. And providing for the Israelites in the wilderness. And sending Jesus so we can live with God forever. You can look at how God has worked in your own life too, like giving you courage when you had to get a blood draw or helping you make friends at a new school. And you can focus on what God has promised to do in the future too like making everything that was wrong right again. Could you imagine what that would be like? When you look at what God has done, is doing, and will do, you can always find a reason to celebrate. <laughs> and that should put a smile on your face. Absolutely. But choosing to focus on what God is up to doesn't mean you should pretend nothing's wrong it's still important to be real about the hard stuff in your life. But you can still choose joy in spite of the tough things. I, for one, am always up for a celebration. <laughs> Me too. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. There's always a reason to celebrate. Ready to try again? I thought you'd never ask. It's working. Oh, it worked! Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time!